So get on your feet. I said the people are marching, so get on your feet. The people are ready, so follow their lead. The people are ready, so follow their lead. We're gonna end all this violence, this hatred and greed. We're gonna end all this violence, this hatred and greed. So rise up, we're gonna rise up. So rise up, we're gonna rise up. We ain't gonna let nobody turn us around. We ain't gonna let nobody turn us around. Because the people united will stand our ground. 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 Welcome to the poor people. Welcome to the poor people's campaign, a national call for moral revival. 50 years ago, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and many other leaders launched a poor people's campaign to tackle systemic racism, poverty, and militarism. By many measures, these interrelated problems are worse today than they were back in 1968. And if you add in climate change and ecological devastation, the urgency is even greater. It is time to break the silence about America's war on the poor. Yeah. Yeah. 140 million people live in poverty today, and it's not because people are lazy or unwilling to work hard, but it's because politicians have blocked living wages and health care and undermined union rights and wage increases. You can see the war on the poor all around us. The richest 1% in our country own more wealth than the bottom 90% combined. No! no! Governors across the country, including ours, block raising the minimum wage while insisting on budgets that cut crucial safety net programs. No! Thirty-eight percent of people in Vermont are poor or low income. That is a total of 237,000 residents. Forty-six percent are children. That's a world. In Vermont, from 1979 to 2012, the income for the top one percent grew by 163 percent. During the same amount of time, our income only increased by 21%. Whoa! Whoa, shame! Last Monday, we showed our unity across the nation. There are 37 actions like this held in 35 state capitals. That was just the start, and today we are going to do it again. All right. Our theme for this week is Lincoln, Systemic Racism, and Poverty, 
voting rights, and immigration. Yes. So let me begin by addressing immigration. In the years following the attacks of 9-11 and among fears of economic insecurity, we have been led to believe that immigrants make our communities less safe, threaten our culture and democracy, and compete for our jobs and resources. However, undocumented immigrants contributed $5 trillion to the United States economy over the last 10 years. They paid $13 billion in Social Security in 2010, but only received $1 billion in benefits. They also pay 8% of their income in state and local taxes, while the wealthiest 1% pay just 5.4%. These millions of hard-working Americans who strengthen our economy and communities must be treated with dignity and respect due to all human beings. They should not be used as cover for attacks on democracy. And on that note, now I want to introduce Thelma Gomez from Migrant Justice. All right. Buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Thelma Gomez. Soy parte de Justicia Migrante y muchas gracias a todos por estar aquí. All right. All right. My name is Thelma Gomez. I'm part of Migrant Justice, and thank you very much. I'm very excited to be here. Es tan importante hacer todo esto. Quiero contar un poco más de mi historia. Y soy una chica que emigró a los Estados Unidos teniendo 16 años. I want to tell you about my story. I want to talk a little bit about what is that I'm doing here. I came as a girl, 16 year old. Vine a luchar, a cumplir muchos de mis sueños como cualquier otro inmigrante, para mejorar a mi familia en las condiciones en las que vivimos. Muchas veces nuestro sistema nos excluye y nos hace que tengamos que emigrar a otros países para mejorar la vida de nosotros. So I came to improve the life of my family and myself. I came with dreams. I came to work because the system, even in our countries, thanks to this country, it doesn't allow us to succeed. It excludes us from so many things, so it forces us to migrate. Y aún migrando y aún llegando a un país lleno de muchas oportunidades, somos buscados y creados como criminales. No puede ser que, que un ser humano sea buscado por simplemente querer mejorar o por buscar la vida de mejor de su familia. And when we come here, we learn about the reality that we are searched, we are criminalized as immigrants. It's not okay to uh, label us as criminals because we come to improve our lives. That's not fair. Este sistema nos, a veces nos crea enemistades con entre comunidades, hace que nos dividamos y eso no tiene que ser. Tenemos que estar unidos para combatir mucho de eso. Nadie es criminal. Nosotros no odiamos el país por, por tratarnos así. Odiamos el sistema que nos excluye de todo. And this system divides us. It brings problem between us. It doesn't want us to get together, but together we're going to rise. Together we're going to fight. Because nobody is a criminal when we want to improve. We're not going to let people call us criminals. We're going to come together to improve together um, just as a whole. That's right. That's right. Siempre es importante mantenernos en unión y unidos, siempre luchando. Um, para mí es muy importante estar aquí y dar mucho de lo que mi comunidad hace, porque a pesar de los problemas y a pesar de que somos criminalizados, seguimos luchando para que esto, para que esto deje de existir. So we're not angry with the country. We're not angry to be here. We're angry with the system. Yeah. The system that criminalizes. And we're going to still here. We're going to still fighting. We're going to still in the struggle. We're going to keep together because together we can do more. That's right. Yeah. Muchas gracias. Right. Si sí se puede. Si sí se puede. Si sí se puede. Si sí se puede. Sí se puede.
Thank you, Thelma. Those who make policies are returning to the State House this week. They are returning to our house. No, nothing would be more tragic than for us to turn back now. That's right. That's right. We need them to know that right now we are standing together with our brothers and sisters from 35 other states as part of a nationwide protest demanding new programs to fight systemic racism and poverty, immediate attention to the fact that we are destroying our environment, and a call to curb militarism and the war economy. That's right. Yeah. 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 The Poor People's Campaign has six core demands for this week, and they are the immediate restoration of the Voting Rights Act, yeah. 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 the end to racist gerrymandering, yeah. the reversal of state laws that prevent municipalities from raising wages, yeah. 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 a just immigration system, yeah. a timely citizenship process that guarantees the right to vote, yeah. Yeah. And, end the, and end the mistreatment of indigenous communities. Yeah. Yeah. So with that said, our next speaker is Reverend Arnold Thomas, pastor and Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Jericho, Vermont. Yeah. All right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My father grew up in a small town in eastern Alabama in 1904. He grew up in poverty, but he managed to work his way up and out of Alabama and into Cleveland, Ohio, as one of the first five black inspectors for what was then the Pennsylvania Railroad. Now, despite this advancement, he was still subject to a racist system that favored white inspectors over black inspectors mm -hmm. and would often find himself laid off from work. And during that time, which were, during those times which were very frequent, he would fall back on a vocation that taught him that when hard times come, you go fishing. <laughs> <laughs> See, that was, uh, was a living example of a Chinese proverb that said, if you teach a person, if you give a person a fish, then that person will be fed for a day. But if you teach a person how to fish, then that person will have the means of living for a lifetime. That's right. Yeah. So dad went fishing. And he had a favorite spot in on Lake Erie where he would catch a species of fish called sheephead. Sheephead. Now, nowadays, it is difficult to find a place in, in our country, especially where people of color and poor people live, where the water is of the quality where you can be assured that the fish you cap, catch are not tainted with some form of corruption. Shame. 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 Yeah. We need brothers and sisters to go fishing. Mm -hmm. All right. You may have heard of a small town in eastern Alabama, actually, it's not so small anymore. It's called Anniston, Alabama. Have you heard of that place? Yes. Yeah. Where Monsanto built a PCB plant that has been that was working for 40 years. 40 years they dumped PCB into the water where people bathed and quenched their thirst, where people baptized their children and swam, unknowing, unknowing the poison that existed around them. Yet they did it, yet Monsanto did it for 40 years knowing the, the harmful effects it would have on the human body. Shame. 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 Brothers and sisters, 
that is but one of the many examples in which the message is brought home that if you're poor and a person of color living in the United States, you are the target and victim of fat cats who will inflict all manner of environmental atrocities upon you knowing that you have the least resources and the least ability to, to resist their corruption. Preach, preach and it is only, it is only by our united force yes. rising up, coale coalescing our energies that we can overcome these obstacles, that we can right. move right. mountains. Right. Yes. Right. It is time to go fishing. But unlike my dad who fished for a sheep, for, for a fish called sheep heads, it is time we fished for corporate heads. We need to fish and clean and gut out the corruption that is yes. inflicting our society by their selfish greed. Yes. Yes. And it is only by doing that that we can truly free ourselves from enslaving policies and conditions that tie us and chain us to an agenda of poverty wages, an agenda of substandard living condition, mm -hmm. an agenda of, of, of inhuman living quality and life. Yeah. So it is now, it is now time for us to coalesce our energies yeah. yes. and to move toward uh, developing a moral economy yeah. by yeah. which yes. all people can be housed and closed and, and, and educated and live in an environment that is toxic free, yes. 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 that is filled with all manner of hope and potential by which all of us can grow in the dignity of life that we deserve. Yes. And as I think of clean water and a clean environment, I am reminded of the prophet Amos, whose instruction we must all heed. To let justice flow down like a cleansing water and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. Let's go fishing, brothers and sisters. And our bait is compassion, our bait is forgiveness, and our bait is love. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Arnold Thomas. Before we hear our next speaker, I want to point out something. It's obvious that I am a person of color, but I want you to know that I am also a person with autism. Because of that, one issue that hits home for me is knowing that a report from the Vermont Legal Aid in 2015 found that black and Native American students were two to three times more likely than white students to be suspended from school. Other important statistics that clearly show racism in Vermont are that 17% of black people own houses in comparison to 71% of whites who own houses. That's right. It's a shame. 69% of black people in Vermont earn less than $15 an hour. What? Shame. One in 14 African American males are incarcerated in this state. Shame. 11% of the prison population is black, whereas we only make up 1% of the population. That's a shame. Shame. And a use of force study conducted in 2017 in Burlington revealed that 18% of all use of force was against African Americans, where they represented less than 4% of the population. So on that disturbing note, I would like to turn it over uh, to our next speaker, 
and it is Katrina Battle from Black Lives Matter of Greater Burlington. Hello. 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 Seven days ago, I stood outside of our nation's capital, along with poor people of varied gender identities, sexual orientations, religious affiliations, racial and ethnic backgrounds, and abilities, doing what everyone told us could not be done. Yes. Yes. We stood together, yes. united in solidarity with one another, mm -hmm. crying, someone's hurting our people, and we won't be silent anymore. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Right. Joined by people in over 30 states across the country, including this one right here on State Street, we were a part of thousands across this nation participating in coordinated, nonviolent, direct action as we released our national call for a moral revival. Yes. yes. As we gathered on stage before taking our united stand to the streets, I was proud to stand there telling the world that my name was Katrina and I am Vermont too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. As a child growing up in Northern Vermont, I faced the all too normal burden of learning to properly handle being called the N-word and accepting that my, my peers accepting my intelligence as not just notable, but surprising. Shame. 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 During my time here, I learned to survive mm. by any means necessary. Whether it was willingly speaking on behalf of all black people in the classroom during our unit on racism, mm -hmm. or not challenging friends that believed I carried an unfair advantage in poetry recitation competitions because I was a black woman reading Langston Hughes's Mother to Son. Wow. 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 Upon graduating, I did as many black Vermonters do and left without looking back. I would always say Vermont is a wonderful place to visit. But I could never live there, let alone raise my children there. I wouldn't wish that on any child that looked anything like me. Upon my return two and a half years ago, I was only mild, mildly surprised to find that little to nothing had actually changed, with one exception. Many had apparently not received my warning, and there were far more of us here than had been 10 years ago. I have been living in this black body for enough years to become well acquainted with the costs associated with being in it and how to survive in it. But what I cannot allow to settle in my spirit is the acceptance that our 10 year olds must continue to do exactly the same. This is not a uniquely Vermont problem, nor is it even an individual problem. But it is something that each Vermonter has an individual responsibility to take on and do something to fix. That's right. We must actively work to restore the humanity that has been systemically stripped away from those of us with black and brown bodies since the very first colonizers landed here and massacred those who were indigenous to these mountains. Since the first bodies were ripped from the shores of Africa to fuel the economy of a nation of people seeking its own freedom from a European oppressive force. We must commit without relent to self-education, action, and each other. That's right. I've often been told that the rate at which reels turn is determined by how large they are. I stand here today to shift that narrative because the rate at which a wheel turns is determined not only by its size, but by how hard and how consistently it is pushed forward. That's right. Which is why today and over the next five years and beyond, we must can maintain our commitment to move forward together. Yes. I said we must maintain our commitment to move forward together. Why are all of these things required? You racial justice advocates got this. Mm -hmm. Our work can wait. No, it cannot. That's right. Can I be real for a moment? Be real. Yeah. Be real. Be real. I'm tired. 
I'm tired of people telling me it's all in my head as high schoolers continue to be suspended and disciplined at disparate rates. I'm tired of being told everyone is being treated equally when black Vermonters are incarcerated at almost 11 times the rate of our white counterparts. I'm tired of people telling me to calm down as elementary schools get notes stuffed in their bags calling them monkey and that they should hang themselves because they're monkeys. I'm tired of people telling me there's nothing they can do when KKK recruitment flyers go up on the homes of a black and brown women in this state. I'm tired of being told it's not an immediate problem when according to 2001 to 2015 data published this Monday by JAMA Pediatrics, suicide rates for black children are twice that of their white counterparts. Hi. I'm tired Hi. of people telling me it's no big deal when people chanting blood and soil appear outside of city hall. I'm tired of the rhetoric that says those people should just go back to where they came from. I'm tired of the twisted measuring sticks used to determine whose voice matters in this Green Mountain state. I'm tired of fighting to remove slavery from the Constitution that all elected officials of Vermont swear to uphold. Even more, I'm tired of folks admonishing me on how great the work is that I'm doing while doing nothing themselves. I'm tired of hearing people walking around around talking about how important this work is, who find themselves absent when it's time to do the work on days like today. I'm tired of fighting these issues with one interest group at a time. I'm tired of talking and talking and talking until my throat is raw while nothing gets done and progress is fiend. I'm tired of panels being created without the funding, the authority, or the freedom to actually do the work. I'm tired of consultants and directors being and keeping the cycles and nonprofit industrial complex yes. in place. Yes. I am tired of being placated like a child begging for milk. I'm tired of being told it's just another thing while everyone else is so busy. I'm tired of choking on the lie that hate does not grow in the rocky soil of Vermont. Hate, Hi. ignorance, and bigotry grow just fine in our soil, in our schools, yes. in our government offices, yes. and in our streets That's right. like a mold that spreads unnoticed by the white majority while those affected by its spores are screaming out that they cannot breathe yes i am tired tired, tired. 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 but i won't be silent anymore Devastation, devastation is immoral. immoral. The war on the poor, the war on the poor is, immoral. is immoral. Systemic racism, Systemic racism is, immoral. is immoral. Environmental justice, Environmental justice is, what we need. Thank is what we need. So we're going to do another song. I mean, actually, uh, if this banner could kind of get out of the open a little bit. So this, we, we're just, we've been hearing this week and last week, and we'll be hearing this whole 40 days about, about the mean things that are happening in this land, about the injustices that just uh, can't go on any longer. Uh, so this is a song that's also on the, the word sheet that I passed out. Um, just join in once you, once, you, once you hear it. There are mean things happening in this land. There are mean things happening in this land. But the movement's going on, and the movement's growing strong. There are mean things happening in this land. There's injustice. There's injustice happening in this land. There's injustice happening in this land. In this land. But the movement's going on, and the movement's growing strong. There's injustice happening in this land. There is racism happening in this land. There is racism happening in this land. But the movement's going on, and the movement's growing. 
fight strong. There's a racism happening in this land. There'll be good things. There'll be good things happening in this land. There'll be good things happening in this land. When the people take a stand and unite as a solid band, there'll be good things happening in this land. There'll be justice. There'll be justice happening in this land. There'll be justice happening in this land. When the people take a stand and unite as a solid band, there'll be justice happening in this land. There'll be freedom. There'll be freedom happening in this land. There'll be freedom happening in this land. When the people take a stand and unite as a solid band, there'll be freedom happening in this land. Our next speaker is Madeline Shero, showing up from Racial Justice Central Vermont. Thank you. I'm going to start with a quote from Ann Braden. A new massive thrust toward racial justice will not alone solve all the problems that face us, but I am convinced that unless such a thrust develops, one that is global in its outlook, mm -hmm. the other problems will not be solved. Because they're at the bottom of this society, when people of color move, the foundation shifts. In a sense, the battle is and always has been a battle for the hearts and minds of white people in this country. The fight against racism is not something we're called on to help people of color with. We need to become involved as if our very lives depended on it. Because in truth, they do. Ann Braden was a lifelong white anti-racist organizer in the South during the civil rights era until her death in 2006. Her legacy sets an important precedent for those of us who are white. And there are a lot of white people in Vermont. That's right. <laughs> Imagine if every single white person in the state was deeply engaged in the struggle for racial justice. Mm. All right. Yeah. Imagine if every single one of us was talking to our families, our friends, yeah. Yeah. our co-workers about racism and showing up to fight for racial justice. Yeah. Yeah. This is the kind of movement we need to build. Yeah. Yeah. Remember what Mark said last week about Vermont locking up more black men proportionately than any other state? No. We've got to change that. That's yes. right. That's right. Have you heard about the ethnic studies bill? Yes. 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 We need that. That's yes. Right. Yes. yes, we do. Justice and dignity for all immigrants? We demand that. Yes. yes. And like Ann said, this is not about charity. It's about solidarity. Yes. Yes. Because we know that all liberation and survival is deeply tied to each other's. Yes. 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 I grew up in central Vermont and I love my home. I love it enough to know that white Vermonters have the strength and the integrity to look white supremacy in the eye and choose justice. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So plug into the Poor People's Campaign. Yeah. Support migrant justice. Yeah. Yes. Organize with justice for all. Yes. Stand with Black Lives Matter. Yes. And get connected to showing up. So this is the Poor People's Campaign, a call for a moral revival. Yes. Yeah. A true moral agenda seeks to fulfill the democratic promise in the United States Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, reminding the nation of the truths we hold to be self-evident and the values we hold dear. Yes. In 2016, presidential election, there were 25 debates. Not one of these debates focused on voter suppression, poverty, environmental devastation, 
or the war economy, all of which are central issues that impact most of us living in the United States. For too long, the accepted moral narrative in America has blamed poor people for their poverty, pitted people against each other, separated systemic racism from poverty and the war economy, and spread the lie of scarcity, the idea that there is not enough to go around. We demand a new moral discourse in this nation. One that says being poor is not a sin, but poverty is. Every choice is a moral choice, especially when it deals with poor people, children, and health care. And so we need a moral revival in this country. When there is an emergency, an ambulance doesn't need to stop for a red light. Dr. King once said, the country needs ambulance drivers who will ignore the red lights of the system. I am ready to break the silence and speak out for the change we need. That's why I'm joining tens of thousands of people for for 40 days of nonviolent direct action as part of a new poor people's campaign. We are taking our demand for a moral revival to politicians at the Capitol here in Montpelier and in 40 states across the country. So the next speaker is Reverend Abigail Stockman, Developmental Minister, First Church, a Barry Eutherin, and Universalist. So I first want to say amen for all we've heard. Amen. Folks who are way more eloquent. But I think back to a time when I was just a small child and I heard the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King say the words, free at last, free at last. Thank God. I was a small white child of privilege, so I didn't think he was talking about me. I thought he was talking about all the people who look different from me. And it took me many decades to begin to understand that I am not free if I think there's a separation and a difference because our skin isn't the same color, because our cultures are different, because our religions are different, because one of us has some funds in the bank and one of us doesn't, because I get health care and you don't. Mm -hmm. Those are not things that make anyone more or less human than anyone else. I am deeply ashamed to know that I thought that way once, that I was taught to think like that without even knowing that like a fish, I was living in that water. It's time to pull that fish out of the water. Time to go fishing to understand our own whiteness, if you are white, so that you can know what it is that comes to you because of your whiteness that makes you think or respond or act in some way as though there were a difference in the way our hearts beat, in the way we know love, in the way we suffer, in the violence that we experience. So last night, as I went to this training, I learned this wonderful song which said, I know why I was made. Mm. (laughs) And understanding my own internal and place in the systemic racism helped me to remember why I 
was made for the love that we need to go fishing for as we work to end all the injustices, as we work for the morality that says health care for everyone, right. a system of immigration that is humane and fair and rapid. Yes. Right that we end the kinds of incarceration that just keep slavery and racism going in new ways. It is immoral. It is wrong. Let's not continue participating in that. We know why we were made. Yes. I am not afraid, I am not afraid, I will march for liberation, cause I know why I was made. I am not afraid, I am not afraid, I will stand for liberation, cause I Good afternoon, everyone. I just wanted to remind everyone that we are in a season right now, uh, and this is a season of nonviolent moral fusion, direct action. And this is a 40-day period, and what we're doing is we are rolling week after week in these activities. Uh, this is the second week. Uh, what generally happens is, is that at the top of the week on Sunday, there is a, um, a meeting called The Gathering that meets in D.C. that is live streamed, that you can go to Poor People's Campaign, poorpeoplescampaign.org, and you can uh, tune into that video, and you, or else you can come down to the Episcopal Church, the Church of the Good Shepherd, or else you can set up your own meetings, but that's happening every Sunday. Every Tuesday is Truthful Tuesday, uh, where there's a recap on the activities for the week. You know what's going on on Monday, because we're already here. On, on Thursdays, what's happening is uh, Justice Jam. Uh, and we're, what we're doing is, is we're hosting here at the Unitarian Church, but again, it's live streamed. Uh, so you can also do it in your own homes or you can set up your own venues. The Justice Jam is an hour pack of just justice music, testimony, lots of talking, lots of singing, and just having a good time. So I want to encourage everybody to get out. This is the second week. So this is the second week of a six-week period culminating where we're all going to converge on Washington, D.C. And we're going we're gonna to march on D.C. and we're going to let them know what it is that Vermont has to bring to the table. How many believe that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, next week it's yeah. Oh, that's, that's uh, uh, the other thing is, is next week, um, we're not going to meet here on Monday. It's going to be on Tuesday. Okay. Monday's Memorial Day. Monday's Memorial Day. So next week we're going to meet here on, on Tuesday. Tuesday. And I think that, that uh, final day down in D.C. is, uh, is it June 23rd? June 23rd. Okay. All right. So my sisters and brothers, in just a few minutes, we're going to march. We're going to march into the State House. Yeah. And uh, Michelle's going to tell us about State House. Who's house? Our house. Who's house? Our house. Who's house? Our house. Who's house? Our house. All right. All right. Now, I want all the moral witnesses, those moral witnesses that we have, come up here and line up. What we're going to do is led by some of the clergy and our moral witnesses, we're gonna go around this west door over to the accessible door. Coming in through the accessible door, down the corridor, right into the main hallway on the first floor. Get all my moral witnesses up here. Victoria, all the moral witnesses, stand up here. These people are gonna sit there. These people are gonna tell their stories that poverty is immoral, systemic racism is immoral, right. ecological devastation is immoral, yeah. the war economy is immoral. Yeah. We have the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for a moral revival. And our moral witnesses are gonna lead us. So give it up for these moral witnesses. Let's go! Okay, are you ready to go? Oh. 
song. All right, start us with the song and come on and join us. Ian, as you enter the state capitol, if you have a sign with a stick, please put it down by the door. Just take in the fabric signs and the cardboard signs and come join us inside our house. Uh, Earl. I'm just, I'm just going to play some music. Hey, I'll take some music.